For over 30 years, the Soviet Union conducted the most ambitious planetary exploration program in history, sending over 20 missions to Venus between 1961 and 1984. While the world focused on the moon race, Soviet scientists were quietly conquering Earth's hellish twin planet. What they discovered in the crushing depths of Venus's atmosphere wasn't just rocks and gas, it was something that challenged everything we thought we knew about life in the universe. Today, we're uncovering the shocking truth about what Soviet probes really found on Venus. The Venus Obsession The Soviet space program had a problem. America was winning the moon race and they needed a different target to claim cosmic superiority. Venus became their obsession, a world so similar to Earth in size that scientists called it our sister planet. But this sister had a dark secret. With surface temperatures reaching 464 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt lead, and atmospheric pressure 90 times greater than Earth, Venus was literally hell in space. The first Soviet attempt came in February 1961 with Venera 1, which lost contact after 7 days and 6 million kilometers from Earth. But failure only fueled their determination. Chief designer Sergei Korolev and his team at OKB-1 weren't deterred by the hellish conditions, they saw Venus as the ultimate engineering challenge. If they could build machines that survived Venus, they could build machines that survived anything. Between 1961 and 1970, they launched eight Venera missions, each one teaching them something new about the hostile world that awaited. The Soviets were preparing for war against an entire planet, and they intended to win. Breaking Through Hell the breakthrough came on December 15, 1970, when Venera 7 became the first human-made object to successfully transmit data from Venus's surface. The probe survived exactly 23 minutes in conditions that would instantly vaporize any human. But those precious minutes of data transmission made history. Humanity had finally touched another planet and lived to tell about it. Venera 7 revealed that Venus's surface pressure was crushing at 90 Earth atmospheres, equivalent to being 900 meters underwater in Earth's oceans. The temperature readings were beyond anything scientists had predicted, a constant 475 degrees Celsius that never varied between day and night. This wasn't just hot. This was a planet-wide furnace powered by an extreme greenhouse effect. The Soviet engineers led by Mikhail Lavochkin at the Lavochkin Design Bureau had accomplished the impossible. They had built a machine that could survive conditions more extreme than anything found on Earth. Venera 7's success proved that Soviet engineering could conquer the most hostile environment in the solar system, setting the stage for even more ambitious missions that would change our understanding of Venus forever. The First Photographs from Hell October 22, 1975 marked one of the greatest achievements in space exploration history, when Venera 9 transmitted the first photograph ever taken from the surface of another planet. The black and white image showed a landscape of flat stones and rocks scattered across Venus's hellish terrain, proving that the surface wasn't covered in global oceans as some scientists had theorized. Just three days later, Venera 10 landed 2,200 kilometers away and sent back a second image showing similar rocky terrain. These weren't just photographs. They were proof that Soviet technology could function in conditions that would destroy any Earth-based equipment in seconds. The landers were built like armored tanks, with thick titanium pressure vessels and advanced cooling systems designed by Vyacheslav Kovtunenko and his engineering team. Each probe carried panoramic cameras, drill systems, and atmospheric analyzers that functioned for over two hours on the surface. The images revealed Venus as a dim, orange-tinted world where rocks showed signs of chemical weathering from the planet's corrosive atmosphere. But buried in the technical data from these missions was something far more intriguing than rocks and temperature readings, anomalies that would spark decades of scientific debate about what really existed in Venus's crushing depths. The Soil Analysis Mystery When Venera 13 landed on March 1, 1982, it carried the most sophisticated scientific equipment ever sent to Venus's surface. The probe's drill system extracted soil samples and performed detailed chemical analysis using an X-ray fluorescence spectrometer designed by Soviet scientists at the Institute of Space Research. What they found defied all expectations. Venus's soil contained unusual organic compounds that shouldn't have existed in such extreme conditions. The soil samples showed higher-than-expected carbon content and chemical signatures that resembled biological processes found on Earth. Even more mysterious, 
the drilling revealed layered sedimentary structures that suggested Venus might have had liquid water on its surface in the distant past. Venera 13 also detected atmospheric anomalies at ground level, chemical gradients that seem to indicate active processes rather than static environmental conditions. The probe transmitted data for 127 minutes before succumbing to the extreme heat, but those minutes contained enough information to revolutionize our understanding of Venus. Soviet scientists led by Roald Sagdiev at the Institute of Space Research knew they had discovered something extraordinary, but they couldn't yet prove what it was. The data suggested Venus might not be as lifeless as everyone assumed. The Balloon Missions The most ambitious phase of Soviet Venus exploration began in 1985 with the Vega program. Twin missions that would drop atmospheric balloons into Venus's middle atmosphere, where conditions were surprisingly Earth-like. Vega 1 and Vega 2 each released balloon gondolas at 54 kilometers altitude, where temperatures were a moderate 0 to 60 degrees Celsius, and pressure was similar to Earth's surface. These balloons, designed by Jacques Blémont in collaboration with Soviet engineers, floated for 46 hours while transmitting continuous atmospheric data. The balloons discovered something remarkable. Venus's middle atmosphere contained water vapor, sulfuric acid clouds and most intriguingly phosphine gas at concentrations that couldn't be explained by known geological processes. The atmospheric chemistry data showed complex organic reactions occurring in the cloud layers, with chemical cycles that resembled biological processes on Earth. Even more mysterious, the balloons detected regular atmospheric patterns and chemical oscillations that suggested some form of organized activity. French atmospheric scientist Jacques Blamont noted that the chemical signatures were unlike anything seen in purely geological planetary atmospheres. The Soviet data indicated that Venus's atmosphere might harbor active chemical processes that could potentially support aerial microorganisms, life floating in the planet's temperate cloud layers far above the hellish surface. The Phosphine Discovery Long before modern astronomers detected phosphine in Venus's atmosphere, Soviet atmospheric data from the 1980s had already identified this mysterious gas in concentrations that puzzled scientists. Phosphine is a molecule that on Earth is only produced by biological processes or industrial manufacturing. It breaks down rapidly in oxygen-rich environments, so its presence indicates active production. The Vega balloon data showed phosphine concentrations of 10 to 20 parts per billion in Venus's cloud layers, levels that couldn't be explained by volcanic activity or atmospheric chemistry alone. Soviet atmospheric chemist Mikhail Zolotov noted that the phosphine readings were accompanied by other unusual chemical signatures, including unexpected hydrogen sulfide patterns and organic compound distributions that defied standard atmospheric models. The data suggested that something in Venus's clouds was actively producing phosphine at rates faster than atmospheric breakdown could destroy it. Even more intriguing, the phosphine concentrations showed temporal variations. They weren't constant, but fluctuated in patterns that resembled biological cycles. This discovery remained buried in Soviet scientific literature for decades, largely overlooked by Western scientists who were focused on Mars exploration. But the implications were staggering. If the Soviet data was accurate, Venus's atmosphere might harbor active biological processes that had been generating phosphine for millions of years. The Surface Geology Anomalies The final Soviet Venus missions in the 1980s revealed surface features that really challenged our conventional understanding of planetary geology. Venera 15 and Venera 16 used radar mapping to penetrate Venus's thick atmosphere, and image the surface from orbit, revealing these massive geological structures that, honestly, just defied explanation. The radar data showed circular formations up to hundreds of kilometers wide that looked like impact craters, but they had internal structures that were way too organized to be random. Soviet planetary geologist Alexander Basilevsky identified over 900 impact craters across Venus's surface, but a lot of those showed some really strange features, central peaks, radial patterns and rim modifications that actually suggested active geological processes. Even more puzzling were these tessellated terrain formations, complex polygonal patterns that covered millions of square kilometers and seemed to be actively maintained, rather than just ancient geological features. The Venera orbiters also detected atmospheric disturbances above certain surface features, suggesting there was active outgassing from specific geological formations. 
Some Soviet scientists even theorized that Venus might have subsurface water reservoirs that occasionally reach the surface through volcanic activity, creating temporary habitable zones in an otherwise super-hostile environment. These geological anomalies raise some big questions about whether Venus's interior might harbor conditions suitable for extremophile organisms, kind of like those found in Earth's deep crustal environments. The Modern Reanalysis In 2020, international scientists took another look at decades-old Soviet atmospheric data and made a pretty shocking discovery. The phosphine signatures detected by Vega balloons weren't measurement errors, but actual atmospheric phenomena. Dr. Jane Greaves at Cardiff University used the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope to detect phosphine in Venus's atmosphere, confirming what Soviet data had suggested 35 years earlier. The reanalysis of Venera atmospheric measurements revealed even more biosignatures that had been overlooked. Ammonia concentrations, unusual water vapor distributions, and organic molecule patterns that really resembled biological processes. Modern atmospheric models have confirmed that Venus's cloud layers, at 50 to 60 kilometers altitude, actually have Earth-like temperature and pressure conditions where terrestrial microorganisms could potentially survive. NASA's Carl Sagan had theorized about aerial life on Venus way back in 1967, but it was Soviet atmospheric data that provided the first real evidence that such life might actually exist. The phosphine discovery sparked renewed interest in Venus exploration, with multiple space agencies planning new missions to search for life in the planet's clouds. Recent computer modeling of Soviet atmospheric data suggests that Venus's middle atmosphere contains all the chemical elements necessary for life — carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur — in concentrations that could support aerial ecosystems. The Soviet missions may have discovered the first evidence of extraterrestrial life without even realizing it. The Modern Reanalysis The Soviet legacy at Venus continues to shape modern astrobiology research and future mission planning. NASA's Da Vinci Plus and ESA's Envision missions scheduled for the 2030s are going to specifically target the atmospheric layers where Soviet probes detected those unusual chemical signatures. These new missions will carry advanced spectrometers and atmospheric analyzers designed to definitively determine whether phosphine and other biosignature gases actually indicate active biological processes in Venus's clouds. Private companies like Rocket Lab are also developing atmospheric probe missions specifically to search for aerial microorganisms in Venus's temperate cloud layers. The discovery of extremophile organisms in Earth's most hostile environments, from deep ocean thermal vents to highly acidic volcanic lakes, has shown us that life can exist in conditions we once thought were impossible. Venus's clouds contain sulfuric acid but Earth organisms like Acidithiobacillus bacteria thrive in similar acidic environments. Modern astrobiologists now theorize that Venus's ancient oceans may have supported life for billions of years before the runaway greenhouse effect drove organisms into the atmosphere. If confirmed, aerial life on Venus would represent the first discovery of extraterrestrial biology and would totally validate 30 years of Soviet atmospheric research. The implications would be profound, proving that life can adapt to the most extreme planetary conditions and could potentially exist throughout the galaxy in ways we never even imagined possible. So there you have it. The Soviet Union may have discovered the first evidence of extraterrestrial life decades before anyone realized it. Which discovery shocked you the most about Venus exploration? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed uncovering this hidden scientific history, make sure to like this video, share it with someone who loves real space discoveries, and don't forget to subscribe to Psy and Y for more mind-blowing revelations about our incredible universe. Until next time, keep questioning what we think we know about life in space.